that I'm three minutes late. I'm moving right now. And I, can I just say, I'm like literally so fucking proud of myself. I kind of want to move that a tear. There we go. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you see me? I'm going to move that guy. Welcome back. We're here on a Tuesday. Let me go on TikTok live right now as well. Can I just tell you, I've literally been working. My hey, I want to play. Yeah. Yeah. I've been working my ass off all day today. A redacted parking lot. Thank you for subscribing. Um, I'm moving. Why is the camera upside down? Oh, because the iPad's upside down. That would make sense. Oh, you can hear my computer. Like, literally about to take off into the sunset. Okay. Oh, I actually really like that iPad placement. Good to know, now that I cleaned my office. Okay. We're here on a Tuesday. Club going up on a Tuesday. Uh, thank you for your patience and your willingness to be here on a day that's not our usual day. Uh, I'm moving tomorrow. The movers come tomorrow. So I thought about canceling stream this week, but then I was like, no, that sucks. I'll just do it on Tuesday because I hate not having it. And plus, I don't know, everyone thought I was crazy for this, like my friends and my family that I was streaming this week. But I was like, I don't want to be up all night packing. And I know that if I'm streaming at seven o'clock, I'll have to have everything done at seven o'clock. And it worked. So like literally no regrets. The only things that are not done, let me tell you, I wish I could like show you around my apartment because it's like crazy how empty it is. Um, the only things that are not packed are this desk, which everything's out of it. I just have to saran wrap it to protect it. My streaming equipment and mic. And then my vacuum, that's it. That's it. So literally, like I was like, no, my roommate's not gone. Our lease doesn't end until July 31st, but um, my new place, I just need to be there faster. And I didn't want to find like a month sublet. So I'm leaving, but she's staying, which is also really nice because not everything has to be like perfect. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, by that, I mean like obviously I'm gonna make my room perfect, but I don't have to do like a walkthrough. And then like a lot of the kitchen stuff we're getting rid of, but she's staying here for a month. So she's gonna use it for a little bit. Um, I literally did get so much done. I literally packed all my belongings and I realized I'm a hoarder. So that's concerning. I would show you everything because I just thought I could switch you to my phone camera and walk around and show you, but everything has like names of people and like the address that like, there's just too much information on it. Okay. Sorry. I just like needed to vent for a second and my fridge is all wrapped up back there i would show you but i don't want to break the camera but anyway speaking of not speaking of anything but let's go ahead and get into anna delvey i'm really excited for this topic um uh, i wish the schedule worked out different so i could be here on a wednesday i hate changing days but whatever so i'm really excited for this topic i just finished inventing anna today so literally perfect timing. I mean, I started watching it this week because of this stream. So thanks again for being here on a Tuesday. Let's go ahead and get into what we have to talk about today. Oh, your elevator story in that building sounded like a nightmare. Oh, it is. And then when, so I sold my couch to someone on Facebook Marketplace um, and she came to pick it up today. And out of the three elevators for my 33 floor building, only one of them was working. So it literally took them like an hour to just take the couch out of my apartment. It was like, today it has been such a day. But okay, other thing I wanna tell you. So I, U-Haul called me this morning. I reserved a truck. Let me just tell you what fucking U-Haul did to me this morning and then we'll get started, sorry. Um, so I like reserved a truck about a month ago and I put like the size we needed, the preferred pickup location, all of that. And then this morning U-Haul calls me and is like, Hey, we just wanted to let you know that we're not sure if your equipment is going to be available. So we wanted to see if you'd be okay with a 10 foot truck or a 20 foot truck because I'd book 15. And I was like, I'm fine with a 20 foot truck, but not a 10 foot because I don't think everything will fit in a 10 foot truck. Also, for those of you on TikTok, I can't see the chat right now because my iPad is like in a bucket. Um, so come to Twitch if you want to like interact in the chat. So anyway, they tell me like, I say, oh, a 20 foot truck is totally fine. Um, I was like, do you have that available? And she was like, oh, I'm not sure. And I was like, okay, so you're not sure if you're going to have the 15 foot one or a 20 foot one 
Like, what can you tell me? And she was like, we're just not sure. Equipment's been coming in really slowly, so we're not sure if we'll have anything available for you tomorrow. And I was like, okay. Um, unfortunately, that's not an option, though. And she was like, well, we, if we don't have it, we don't have it. And I was like, should I try and make other arrangements? And she was like, I don't know. She was like, if you want to, but, like, we could have it. And I was like, so what? Like, you're just calling me to tell me you maybe won't have the truck. And she, I told her, I was like, I'm happy to be flexible. I was like, I can pick it up anywhere in Miami realistically, and I'll take 15 or 20 foot. Like, those are their two most common sizes. I was like, I really, like, girl. And she was like, yeah, I'm sorry. I wish I could tell you more. I just, like, don't know what we'll have available. And I was like, I told her, I was like, I said, I'm sorry that I'm frustrated at you because I feel so bad that you got put in this position to have to make this phone call. I was like, it seems like you're kind of like, because I asked her, I said, can I have the local number? And she was like, no, I'm just the reservation specialist. So like the local people can't help you because you don't have a confirmed reservation. And I was like, so me booking it wasn't confirming it. And she was like, when you book it, there's like a thing you click saying it's subject to availability. And I was like, this God, fuck this company. Oh my God. And then... I was trying to be really nice to her. I accidentally ran a red light because I was distracted on the phone talking to her. I'm so mad about that because I had a camera and I feel like I'm going to get like a $500 ticket because there was a garbage truck in front of me. So I was just following the garbage truck. And then by the time I realized because the truck was covering the light, by the time it went, it was too late and I was already in the intersection. So I just went. Ugh. But anyway, I try and be super nice to her while still telling her I'm freaking out. And I was like, I don't think you understand. I have movers booked. I had to pay for extra insurance to use the service elevators for the building. And I only bought it for one day. And she was like, and I'm supposed to pick up the truck at 10 a.m. And she was like, well, we might have one available later in the day. And I was like, that doesn't work. Like I have the movers from 11 to 5 to like do everything for two separate apartments. Like I, told, I was like, there's a lot of moving pieces to this and I will literally be out thousands of dollars if this truck is not available. And I was like, I'm so sorry you're in this position and you have to make this call. I'm sure people yell at you all of the time, but like I really cannot handle it if this truck isn't available. And that was at like 9.30 this morning. And then at 11.30, she called me again and she was like, hi, I found one, but it's 35 minutes away from you. Do you want to confirm it? She was like, something closer might come up though. And I was like, no, confirm it. I was like, I'll take it. 35 minutes is nothing. I was like, thank you. So I'm very happy because that was really fucking stressing me out for a couple hours there. Um, but yeah, pretty much everything's done. Woohoo. So now that we've been here for a full eight minutes, let's go ahead and talk about Anna Delby. You can tell my brain is like a little bit fried, but I'm super happy to be here with you all. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite time of the week. Oh no, my graphic didn't update. I need to update my little graphic. Can I do it from here? Let's hope so. There we go. Okay, so if you notice, the lovely little graphic at the bottom of my screen is updated because we are much further along to our goal. So I stream normally on Wednesdays, every single Wednesday, and right now I'm using a MacBook Pro. I'm sure you can hear that it wants to launch off into space. So I have the goal to upgrade my computer. So if you would like to contribute to that goal, you can do so via Venmo. Please just make sure you include the word gift so that the IRS does not come out after me because they're going to be like, Queen, are you making money off Venmo? And I'm going to be like, no, it's a gift. It's a donation. Different thing. Um, so if you forgot to include the word gift, it's not the end of the world. But if you could do that, that would be amazing. And if you do not have any money to spare, that is totally fine. I am not here for the money. Or I'm here for the fame. So just you being here is more than enough. So today we're going to be talking about Miss Anna Delvey. Are we familiar with Anna Delvey? Do we know? Sound is unsynced. Is that happening for everybody? Zoe K12, thanks for subscribing with Prime. No. It's fine for you? Okay, good. Okay, perfect. Great. Great. <laughs> really couldn't deal with that right now. I'm hearing people have seen the Netflix show. So apparently the Netflix show is like not 100% super accurate. And the Netflix show like really dramatized. No, it's okay. Hey, J hey, it's J33. It's totally fine. I would rather you guys tell me if something's wrong so I can try and fix it, but obviously it's nice when nothing is wrong. 
on my end. Just your end sounds like you're in a little bit of a struggle with. But anyway, um, Inventing Anna, the Netflix show, appears to have had a fair amount of, um, I don't want to say inaccuracies because it's a drama and they explicitly said that some of the stuff was fake. But some of like the timelines were changed to make the personal interactions like way more dramatic. Like one example is um, her friend for anyone who's watched the show, I'm not really spoiling a ton right now. Um, her friend with the credit card, she, like in the show, she gets the money really quick and in real life it took a really long time. So stuff like that, like the basic premise is accurate, but a lot of the details in the timeline. Um, do most people know who this lady is and I'm just behind the times? You are not. So Anna Delvey, her real name is Anna Sorokin. She is a Russian. She was born January 23rd, 1991. She goes by the alias Anna Delvey. She is a con artist and fraudster who posed as a wealthy heiress to access upper class New York social and art scenes from 2013 to 2017. So if you have not heard of this person, basically she scammed a bunch of people out of money. She was super close to scamming banks out of money. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. That is her mugshot. I must say, like, I really, I, I debated putting this slide in here. Fraudster times <laughs> cartoon bank robber. Oh, uh, what's my Twitch? Um, I'm a Walmart parking lot everywhere. For those of you that are on TikTok, if you want to see the pictures that we're looking at, you have to come to Twitch. Peace, love, and blessings. But anyway, that's me. This is not a mugshot. Um, this is the picture that they took of me when I passed my teaching certification exam in Florida. And I just thought it looked so, like, if this was a mugshot, it's a mugshotty. You know what I mean? And the same goes for her. So I debated including it or not, but I just thought it was really funny. So I wanted to include it. So if any former employers are watching this, I have never been arrested in my entire life. So this is literally my Florida teacher certification exam verification photo. I just thought we look really alike. We look like sisters. We literally do. I mean, we're both of like European ancestry, so it makes sense. But anyway, absolutely obsessed. Oh, is my phone on Do Not Disturb? I hate how when I put my computer on Do Not Disturb, it does it to my phone too. Like, when the fuck did we ask for that? When the fuck did we ask for that? Oh, thank you for the Venmo donations. I don't know if you want to be shouted out, but Katerina and Brooke, I will not give away your last names, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, let me put that away. All right. Apple engineers made us, literally. My lips are super chopped. Okay, so early life. Sorkin was born, like we said, January 23rd, 1991 in Domodivo. I'm not Russian. I don't know. Um, it is a working class satellite town south of Mas Moscow, Russian Federal Republic in the Soviet Union. Her father, Vadim, worked as a truck driver while her mother owned a small convenience store. The girl boss lineage, you know, really, it's strong in this one. Um... In 2007, when Anna Sorokin was 16, her family relocated to Germany, and Anna found the move very difficult because she struggled to learn German. So, like, in the show, they portrayed her as much younger when she moved to Germany. So, like, again, not that serious of a difference. Um, also, moving to a country where you don't speak the language, like, super sucks ass. As someone who has done that, it's very hard and can get really depressing and very, very frustrating. And for those of you on TikTok, I'm on Twitch. Thanks. Um, there, her father became an executive at a transportation company until that company became insolvent, which I guess that means they're not a thing anymore, in 2013. Then he opened an HVAC business specializing in efficient energy use, and her mother was a housewife. Apparently, they also had another baby around this time. She has a brother that's a fair amount younger than her. Um, Sorokin attended, I'm literally not even going to try and say that, but it's Episcopal School of Our Lady of Eschweller, a Catholic grammar school in Eschweller. Um, Pierce said that she was quiet and struggled with the German language. This literally just seems awful to me. Like, to be in Germany, not speaking German, and having to be in high school. But like, come on. I wonder what languages she spoke at this point, because I know she speaks a lot of languages, but I wonder if she spoke English. Because a lot of German kids do speak English, so maybe that would make it easier if she spoke some English. But anyway, must have sucked for her. Not even going to lie. Um, as a young adult, Sorokin obsessively followed Vogue fashion blogs and image accounts on LiveJournal and Flickr. 
So I know what those are, but I'm not super like firsthand experience with them. But apparently because she was kind of like lonely and isolated and didn't have that many friends, really, she kind of just dove into the world of like consuming media, consuming fashion content and got very into that. Kind of like I was thinking about this the other day, how like in high school, I really like was very lame. I didn't like get bullied at school and people didn't think I was lame. Like I had friends, but I didn't go out very much. Like I was like very good acquaintances with everybody, but I wasn't like a partier or anything like that. I would literally just sit in my room rotting on Tumblr. And at first I was like, oh my God, I missed out on so many great experiences. But then I realized, no, I didn't because I was in my room rotting away on YouTube and Tumblr, learning about the internet, learning how to be funny, learning what makes a good story, learning what makes a good video. And now like being an internet goblin is like my passion. Like I love it. I love coming on here and doing stream for you guys. I love doing deep dives on these topics. I love all of that. So I'm like me rotting away on Tumblr was literally just like preparing me for that. Like I not preparing in like a business way, but like just developing my sense of humor and like my and seeing what kind of content people like and stuff like that. So I'm like, actually, no regrets. And I will say that, like, I did have friends that we would rot on Tumblr together. So it's not like I was lonely because I did have friends and we would just rot together. You know, we love a strength based perspective <laughs> trained in the minds of sludge content. Exactly. Exactly. See, y'all get it. Y'all get it. At graduation, when they called my name, I'm like 80% sure I heard someone say who. <laughs> I, in high school, like, I've always been fairly outgoing. Like, I'm pretty comfortable talking to people. So I had a lot of, like, acquaintance friends because I would, like, force whoever sat next to me in class to talk to me and, like, be my friend. So, like, I never had moments in high school where it's like, I don't have anyone to sit with. I don't have anyone to talk to. So, like, it wasn't that way. I just didn't have a ton of super close friendships outside of, like, my little, Yeah chronically online is what we would say so little baby russian anna is in germany she's trying to learn english it's really not going that well for her um after she graduated from that school in june 2011 she moved to london to attend central saint martin's in art school but then she dropped out and returned to germany and then in 2012 she interned at a public relations company in berlin and then she relocated to paris where she earned around 400 euros per month at an internship for purple a french fashion magazine Although Sorokin did not contact her parents often, they subsidized her rent. So it seems like she comes from very upper middle class parents, like upper middle class parents that like, they don't give you a trust fund, but they pay your rent while you're doing your little internship. Kind of that vibe is her background. Um, around that time, she began using the name Anna Delvey, which she claimed was based on her mother's maiden name. Um, Sorokin's parents, however, say that they do not recognize the surname, and Sorokin later admitted that she just came up with it. So Delvey, we're not, she just came up with it. It's not her mother's maiden name. It has no basis in anything. Um, and she seems like she has a pretty strained relationship with her parents. I listened while I was packing. I listened to like six hours worth of podcast about Anna Delvey because I don't have all my TVs are in boxes, so, like, what else was I going to put on? Um, and it seems like her and her parents really started to disagree about things when they started living in Germany, and she started having, like, rules as a teenager. Apparently, she says she hates authority, so they would fight because they would tell her not to do things, and she really hated that they would try and control her with, like, not letting her spend money on things and just, like, normal parent things, like, not letting you go out and do things. Like, she just really values freedom. So... Fraud era begins. The Sorkins. We don't fucking know where that came from. It's also like, so when you watch Inventing Anna, a lot of Americans are like, I can't believe her parents are treating her this way. But America has like, our culture around parent child is really different than a lot of like European countries. Like a lot of like, like Eastern European countries, especially are very hard on their children. So like people would see what her parents would say in interviews and they'd be like, that's so mean. But then when you ask Anna, she's like, they would say that to my face. So I'm really like not going to be in my feelings about what my dad is saying about me. So I think it's, some of the like backlash her parents get for like being mean to her, I think is also just like cultural differences around like people in Eastern Europe are a lot more direct and a lot more curt than most Americans are. So I think that's kind of part of it too. And I do, I do feel really bad for her parents. This would be really fucking stressful and they just seem like normal, regular people. Um, 
So in mid-2013, she goes to New York to attend New York Fashion Week. She found it easier to make friends in New York than Paris, so she opted to stay, transferring to the magazine's New York office for a brief time. And then she quit Purple Magazine, and she came up with the idea of the Anna Delvey Foundation, which, like, I don't think she knows what foundation means. Um, oh, thank you for good luck moving. Um, so anyway, the Anna Delvey Foundation was supposed to be a private members club and art foundation, and it sought funding from wealthy members of, of the city's social scene. So her proposal included leasing the entire church missions house, which is, I don't know, let's look this up. I want to see a picture of this. Oh my God, my computer literally is like on the moon. It's like her. Okay, so here is the building that she wanted to lease. This is very large. This was more intense than I ex expected, even though it is like exactly what they showed in the show. But that's like a lot. Okay, so someone said, I know she's a crook, but she's a vibe. As before we get into this, let's discuss my take. Because at first I was like, oh my god, Anna Delvey is like, she's so fucking funny. She's so fucking sassy. Like, she only stole from rich people. I don't give a shit. So I like literally kind of like put her in icon category. But then after I learned more and saw that she stole from her friends, some of whom were not wealthy people. And then I also listened to a podcast where they talked about her. They talked to her for one of her friends that she stole from. Um, and they talked about narcissist and like how to spot a narcissist and how to protect yourself from a narcissist. And the lady on the podcast was being kind of extra. She was like, we should not be idolizing her. Like she was like a little intense about it, but I really understood her point because she said like, when we idolize narcissist and praise their behavior, every narcissist looking at you is realizing that you like are a potential victim and that like, you don't know how to recognize narcissism. And she was saying that like the best way to combat narcissism is to be aware of it. So we need to be referring to her as what she is, which is a narcissist. Um, and she talked about like how narcissists kind of like see each other and like, pu not pull ideas from each other, but like there's like, they see other people's strategies and learn from that and stuff like that. And as someone who has been in a very uh, emotionally abusive situation with a narcissist, it really, really fucking sucks. So I just kind of wanted to take a second to recognize that she is a narcissist. And even though this situation is funny and there's a lot of funny aspects about this and we are going to laugh and we are going to joke, I kind of just wanted to say that like, we're not idolizing her because she is not a kind and honest person. So I think we can make fun of the situation and think that she has a very iconic, hilarious moments without being like, all hail. You know what I mean? Um, I want to find the episode of the podcast, actually. Child of Eastern Europeans, and you're correct. Exactly. I um, had some babysitters growing up that were Eastern European. And like one time I was like sad because my parents yelled at me. And she was like, literally, get the fuck over it. She was like, your parents are so nice to you. You don't even fucking know. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess you're right. Um, let me find this podcast that I was listening to. It was not, okay, so it's the, it's like a part of the Red Table Talk, but it's not the Red Table Talk. So it's from, it's called Navigating Narcissism with Dr. Romani, and the title is A Fake Heiress But a True Narcissist with Rachel Delachey Williams, and Rachel is the friend that she stole from. So it, it was a very good listen. It's about 35 minutes if you want to listen to it. So, yeah, just wanted to give my little spiel about my thoughts and feelings and emotions about this. So her proposal, she was going to lease the entire church missions house, which is six floors, 45,000 square feet, and it's owned by Abby Rawson's RFR Holdings as a multi-purpose events venue and art studio where she planned visual art center with pop-up shops curated by Daniel Arsham, one of her acquaintances from her internship, and exhibitions by yours for sure, Damian Hurst, Jeff Coons, and Tracy Yamin. Um, she received on planning planning help from the son of the architect, Santiago Calatrava. She also discussed the sale of drinks at the venue with Rue Rogers. I don't know who any of those people are. I thought about Googling all of them and then making you a list, but it just, I didn't think you guys would care either. Basically what you need to know is that they are other rich, important people. That's it. That's literally it. Like they're important people in the, um, What's really important? in the industry that they were listed with. That's it. That's all you really care about. Um, 
Thank you for the pod rec. Speaking of pods, y'all better check out Teacher Quit Talk. Yes, I have a podcast. It's called Teacher Quit Talk. Um, I thought the succession meme was the perfect use here. So this is the part that I was like, oh my God, when I picked this topic, I had no idea. October 13th or October 31st, 2013, Anna allegedly lives with Billy McFarland, the Magnesis creator. So Anna apparently asked Billy McFarland, he's the fire festival guy, um, to stay at the Magnesis house for a few days at its inception, but she ended up staying for four months and they had to move locations because she would not leave. Which, like, what in the fucking crossover is this? I tried really, really hard to find a picture of them together, and I just don't think that it exists. But the fact that Anna Delvey lived in the Magnesis townhouse, like, the fact that, A, we did not realize that when we were talking about Fire Festival, and B, that I talked about Fire Festival, like, so recently. Also, if you didn't see the Fire Festival stream, it's on YouTube. It's a great time. But anyway, here's a picture of her at the Halloween party there. Per a page six anonymous source, Sorkin knew a few people that worked at the company and asked to stay, then she wouldn't leave. The team, including McFarland, hinted that she should scoot, but she never did. The company wound up moving into a townhouse. That's the only way we got her out. She had been there for four months. So this is like early on in her scamming career. She was living in the Magnesis townhouse. And this is her at the Halloween party, which is why she has that weird makeup on her face. But I'm not really sure what her costume is. So I don't fucking know. Birds of a feather squat together. Ain't that the fucking truth? So DJ LED, who is this? I don't even know who this is. Let's just Google it. Oh, cute. Well, she's fun. Okay. Um, a doll maybe? Yeah, maybe. I don't even know. Okay, so DJ LD described a strange encounter with Sorokin Delvey at a party in May 2014 in Monotuck, New York, where Delvey pretended to be a wealthy heiress and bragged about brands of clothes she was wearing, but she also asked party goers for a place to sleep. When they declined, she spent the night sleeping in a car, apparently, and D also described the other attendees at a party she attended that was organized by Anna Sorkin at the Standard Highline. I love the Standard. Um, the standard high line and they said she barely knew them. It was maybe the second time they'd ever met kind of like us Everyone sat around quietly staring at their own phones because apparently she threw this party at the standard And invited all these people and then everyone got there and they're like, oh, how do you and it's not that weird for someone You've met twice to invite you to a big party that they're having because it's like, oh, I guess they like me and they're already throwing this big party so like you're not going to be weirded out getting that invitation. But when you get there and realize every single other person there is in the same boat and that they had only met this person maybe one or two times, then it gets to be weird. And apparently that was the case. Um, Dee describes Sorkin as entitled and mean, particularly to people in the service industry. But I have also, this is the interesting thing. All of the rich people say that she was mean to servers but multiple servers have reported she tipped very well. And I listened to so many fucking interviews with Anna Delvey and the way that she talked about service people, especially at hotels, was always so nice and so respectful. So I don't know, maybe she's just doing that narcissist thing where she like acts very differently to different people. That's probably what it is. But I think this is interesting that like, in front of rich people, she's being like, oh, and like dismissing them. But then like, the hotel staff she's talking about them and she's like they make the hotel like so she was on Paris Hilton's podcast and they were talking about a hotel that she had stayed at that it was like right when COVID happened so a ton of people had gotten laid off and she was like that company made a mistake laying those people off a hotel building isn't what matters it's the staff everyone was so nice like she spoke so highly of multiple hotel staffs in multiple interviews that I listened to and then I'm also hearing rich people saying that she was mean to them so I'm like, I think she was doing both. Like, I think when it was the people at the hotel that she was seeing every day, she was being super nice to manipulate them to like her. And then I think when it was servers at like a restaurant or an event that she would see one time, she would be mean to them in front of other rich people to like show her richness, I guess. That's my theory. I'm not a psychologist, but you know. Um, do, do, do. She castigated people who did not have many followers on Instagram and bragged about how she was going to rent a $12,000 per month, six bedroom, a rooftop apartment. Dee also said that Sorokin relied on her and other her 
relied on her and other acquaintances to pay for expenses by claiming she had forgotten her wallet or that would have, uh, or that it was an emergency or her credit cards did not work and that she would cry. And then as soon as she realized it wouldn't work, she would stop crying. So apparently from the jump, she's been kind of getting people to pay for her stuff and doesn't really have as many assets as she's leading people to believe. So then in 2015, so this is what she's doing. She's just kind of like swindling in New York, staying at people's places, going to fancy things. I don't know like where she's sleeping. I don't know what she's eating. I really have no idea of the like 2013, 2015 era. So in 2015, she met an art collector and the University of Pennsylvania student Michael Zhu Hong at a dinner party and learned that he had planned to attend Venice Benyal. I'm like too poor to understand this. Like if I had done like a separate slide to explain every event, this would have taken me nine hours. Like I, I'm in a part of society that doesn't even know that these events exist, let alone gets invited to them. Actually, sometimes I know they exist because of work, but not always. So I know the Miami ones, but not the New York ones. Um, oh, here's the Nearpod code if you want it. It's like kind of cut off. Here, I'll put it down for a sec so that you can see it. Yay, there you go. If anyone wants it, there it is. Actually, we'll move. Oh my God. I love technology. Look at what I can do. Oh wait, can I? Boom. Rocking and rolling. We love that. We love it. Perfect. Literally perfect. She's Miss Worldwide. Get over there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. So any host. Um, two, two, two. Where are they going? So they are supposed to go to Venice for this art thing. Um, Sorokin asked him if she could accompany him, and he was like, yeah, sure, queen, and booked a flight and hotel room for her on the understanding that he would be reimbursed for, the, like, the $2,000 cost. On the return to New York, Sorokin was like, oh, my God, I totally forgot, and just never paid him, and he just kind of assumed that she was absent-minded, which, like, that is the richest person thing I've ever heard. Oh, she never paid me the three grand she owed me, so I just assumed she was absent-minded. I'm going to be at the forefront of your mind if you owe me three grand. You're going to get many reminders. I'm going to be present and attended for at your mind. Like, your mind, I'm there. Like, what do you mean? Oh, I just thought she was absent-minded. Rich people are crazy. Pretty privilege is just... So that's one other thing. I So I don't like just talking about people's looks usually, but I think it's relevant here. People were saying, like, she was not like crazy drop dead gorgeous. Like it's not like Gigi Hadid walked in. Like she's a pretty normal average looking person, you know? Like she didn't have like crazy expensive makeup or hair. Like she's a normal person looks wise, um, which so am I, so no shade. But anyway, he says she's absent minded. And then they also attended Art Basel in Miami Beach. I know that one. Um, and Sorkin hired a public relations firm to book a birthday party for her at Sedell's restaurant in January 2016. After her credit card was declined and pictures of Hong at the event were posted on social media, Hong was asked by the restaurant staff if he had Anna Sorkin's contact details because apparently they started contacting all of her guests because the credit card she gave them for this giant fucking party she threw was like a fake credit card and they wanted someone to pay for it, which like... Why didn't you run it before the party? This one thing that this whole situation shows is that rich people are very trusting of each other. Like they're not running each other's cards. They're not checking things. They're not Googling things. They just trust each other. It's crazy. Um, where was I? At this time, Hong became suspicious of Sorkin, also noticing that she always paid in cash and lived in a hotel, not an apartment. So she's always bouncing around at different hotels. And he was eventually repaid, but from a Venmo account with an unfamiliar name. So I guess he paid for the party. Like, why does this man just keep throwing down money for her? Um, he then blocked her access to him on social media and ended their friendship. So I guess when you're rich, you just pay the bill and end the friendship, which is easier, I guess. Um, then in February 2016, while Sorkin was living in a hotel room in the Standard High Line, she met Rachel Dolish. Rachel Dolis Dolism, imagine. Rachel Williams, we'll go. Delosh, Deloche, I don't know. Rachel Williams, who was a photo editor at Vanity Fair 
and a night Vanity Fair at a nightclub. Oh, so they met at a nightclub. Rachel is a photo editor at Vanity Fair. So Rachel is one of the people that she stole from. And Rachel is a normal working person with a normal person job. Rachel comes from like a middle upper middle class family. She moved to New York because she wanted to work in media and she was working as a photo editor at Vanity Fair and she was making about $60,000 a year. Um, I really want to read Rachel's memoir. I have to drive. So tomorrow the movers are coming and then we're staying in a hotel tomorrow night and then we're driving the next day and I might listen to the audiobook while I drive, but I'm not 100% sure. We'll see if I find something else to listen to. Okay, so anyway, um, Williams described Sorokin as demanding and rude to wait staff and said that when an elevator opened, she wouldn't even wait for other people to get off. Sometimes I don't do that. <laughs> um, nevertheless, Williams became close friends with her and was later instrumental in her arrest. No, only a scammer, but also rude to servers. But multiple servers that have served her have been like, yeah, she would tip me hundreds all the time. If you pay me, you can be mean to me. That's fine. Um, here's a screenshot of her Instagram. This was May 9th, 2015, and she is in Venice. So this is when she was on this trip, this Venice trip, the art thing that she never paid for. But you see what I mean when you look at her? Like, she doesn't appear to have plastic surgery. She's not wearing a ton of makeup. Like, she's not a super, like, glitz and glamour -y type person. Um... We are on slide 14 of 46, but there's a lot of videos, which is why we have less slides. And then here is a picture she posted, given free feet. She may be a scammer, but she's given free feet. Um, this is Soho Beach House, Miami. I fucking love Soho Beach House. I'm way too poor to be there, but it seems great. And I went in there very briefly one time to drop something off. Because that, that is the class of person I am. I have not reached the level where I get to hang out at Soho Beach House. I get to drop things off for the people there. <laughs> a white woman's Instagram. Yes, she very much is a white woman's Instagram. If she had capitalized on her feet, she wouldn't need to scam. Exactly. Give me your money for the flight back from Venice or I'm <laughs> throwing you in the canal. Um, so here is her at an Uber launch party with that was hosted by emmy rosam um this was june 10th 2014. i don't really have anything to say about this party but i just kind of wanted to show you some photos of her during this time on her instagram apparently she posted more like landscapes and things as opposed to actual photos of her so i just like pulled some random images from her at various events that i could find then this is a January 13th, 2016. Um, she's with some people. It's like a very 2016 core Instagram. This is at Sedell's. This is that party that she threw, I guess. Um, thank you a million times to my FYP for showing me your live I ran. Oh, we love that. That's why I always go live on TikTok. I'm so happy I figured out I can use my iPad for that. So where are we now? Just to kind of give you a summary of where we've been for anyone who joined late. She's living in New York, she's unemployed, she's kind of couch surfing and being in hotels. She doesn't really have any close friends, but she has this dream of the Anna Delvey Foundation. So when people say like, what's she doing for a living? She is like, oh, I'm starting the Anna Delvey Foundation and leading people to believe that she's a German heiress. So now she's in her time to get going with the Anna Delvey Foundation era, because at this point, like, I think this was her game plan. She was like, I'm gonna go to New York, I'm going to make all these connections. I'm going to establish myself as a rich person and I'm going to know people because even though she doesn't have any friends, she's very active socially and she's acquaintances with tons and tons of people and has thrown multiple large parties that she didn't pay for. So, and because she's not super close to anyone, she doesn't really have a bad reputation because no one knows her well enough to talk shit about her, I don't think. And like we said, that rich guy was like, I just thought she was absent minded. I don't know when it came to her not paying him. So that's where we are now. And she's getting ready to start trying to make the Anna Delvey Foundation happen. So she used Microsoft Word to create fake bank statements and other financial documents to show that she had 6 million euros in a Swiss bank account, but that she could not access it since they were in a trust and she was in the U.S. So that was her whole thing. She said, I have a $60 million trust. I just can't access it because it's in Europe. I don't know anything about banking laws. I don't, I don't know if that could even hypothetically be true. I, I'm assuming that could hypothetically be true since everyone immediately believed it, but I really could not tell you. Microsoft Word, not even Canva. Like, Girlie did not even use 
like Adobe Illustrator. Like she couldn't even be bothered, just Microsoft Word. I'm surprised she didn't use Google Docs because Google Docs is free. Um, but anyway, she said it was in a Swiss bank account that she couldn't access to because she was in the US. And so one of her acquaintances put her in touch with Andrew Lance, who's a lawyer at Gibson Dunn. I don't know what that means. Um, and he then put her in touch with several large financial institutions, including City National Bank and Fortress Investment Group. So November 2016, she submits false documents as a part of a loan application for $22 million to City National. City National refused to extend the credit when Sorokin failed to provide the source of the Swiss assets, so then she applied for a loan from Fortress. Fortress agreed to consider the application if Sorokin paid $100,000 to cover legal expenses relating to the application. So they're like, we'll think about giving you $22 million, but you have to give us $100,000. So it's going to be a pain in the ass to look all this stuff up. So then December 2016, Sorkin was unable to pay rent because she hadn't been approved from the loan. So the church mission house was leased to somebody else. So that building that she wanted gets leased to somebody else because she's unable to pay the loan. So then January, but I guess they didn't know, like the bank didn't know that it had been leased to someone else. They didn't check. This whole thing is just like rich people not doing due diligence. Um, so on, oh my God, I can't wait for the Ocean Gate scam history class in two years. Stop. Uh, on January 12th, 2017, Sorkin convinced City National to grant her a temporary overdraft fee for $100,000 with the promise, or not a temporary overdraft fee, a temporary overdraft facility for $100,000. Apparently, this allows people to take financial help from a bank that's different than a loan, so it helps in meeting short-term financial needs of a customer and is best suited for people who require immediate funds or credit. So it seems like this is what I gathered. I did a little bit of research about this $100,000 overdraft. And basically, if you are rich enough that you have a personal banker at the bank and they have people that are just catered to you because you're so rich, if you need temporary financing, a bank will let you do this because they want you to keep using them. So it's like a bribe in order for you to keep your business at that bank. I overdraft buying a $7 coffee and overdrafted bank $40. Exactly. Because sometimes rich people go through something which is called like being cash poor. Being cash poor does not mean that you're poor. It means that none of your assets are in liquid cash. So maybe you have real estate, maybe you have investments, maybe you have retirement, whatever. Your money is in a way where you can't get it right away. So sometimes, like let's say I go to my bank, I have millions of dollars in investments, I have multiple pieces of assets with mortgages in this bank, like I'm a really good customer. They might let me overdraft $100,000 because I've shown that I have so much other money that I know I'm going to pay that back that account. So that's kind of, you're like a messenger for poor people. <laughs> oh my God. So yeah. Oh my God, Fraz, hi. It tried to, um, I was objectifying you on TikTok. I didn't feel safe or seen doing something. <laughs> So yeah, apparently when we overdraft our accounts, we have to pay the bank because we're poor. But if you're rich and you overdraft, it's fine, I guess, is the rules. That's kind of what it seems. Everyone gets so excited when Fraz is here. I feel like Fraz coming on the stream is the equivalent of when you were in elementary school and like your teacher's husband dropped something off to the class and everyone was like, what? Like, that's kind of how y'all react. And as you should, like she's very deserving of that reaction. Absolutely. For those of you on TikTok, Miss Frazzled is in the chat on Twitch. So I'm going to use her to try and draw you there. So come to Twitch if you want to see the pictures and hang out with Fraz. I need a fake name. <laughs> I derail the whole thing. We get derailed every 30 seconds. So I don't really think that that's a problem. So anyway, um, she's allowed to overdraft $100,000, I guess. And she provided a fake AOL. AOL. So even though she's a scammer, she's clearly not very technology, like, proficient. Because she's using AOL and Microsoft Word to create stuff. And, like, it's 2017 at this point. Like, there were other better softwares at that time. And, like, the AOL email, immediately, no. 
So she provides the fake AOL email of Peter Henneke, a non-existent business manager. And then when suspicions arose, she claimed that he died and then invented a new persona, Bettina Wagner. Prosecutors in her trial later showed that she had Googled create fake untraceable email. Like girl, girl. Um, so she remitted the $100,000 to Fortress for the loan application. So I just want to remind you of what happened here. So Fortress said, we will consider the loan if you give us $100,000 to cover legal expenses. Then City National agrees that she can temporarily overdraft $100,000. So she gives that $100,000 to Fortress for the loan application for the $22 million. So she's literally just like scheming and swooping money back and forth to people. Um, a managing director at Fortress became suspicious of Sorkin's application due to discrepancies in her paperwork. For example, she claimed to have been of German heritage, but her passport said that she was born in Russia. And when a director arranged to verify Sorkin's assets by meeting with her bankers in Switzerland, she withdrew the loan application to prevent further scrutiny. So this is why I don't think she got nearly as much prison time as a lot of people felt like she should, because she withdrew the loan application and they never gave her the money. So this is proving my money isn't real debate. It's not. It's literally so fake. Literally so, so fake. How did she get this far? She didn't even try that hard. So then in February 2017, $55,000 of that overdraft was given back to Sorkin. Because remember, she gave them 100 k and then she pulled her application. So they said, hey, we only used 45K. We didn't have to use all of it because we never ended up going to Switzerland or doing anything. So here is your $55,000 back. This is very standard. That is so normal. I just want to reiterate that that part is really normal. Like if she paid them for legal fees and then the deal never ended up happening, they would not just get to keep the money that they had not used for legal stuff. So it's not weird that she got the $55,000 back. But what's crazy to think about is she just got 55 grand for free because this was an overdraft and obviously she's not gonna pay that bank back, obviously. Um, so once she gets this $55,000, which you can live comfortably for a year on 55 grand, especially she's not like she has to pay taxes on it. Well, she should, but you get what I'm saying. She got it illegally, so she's not going to pay taxes on it. But, like, you can live in New York on 55 grand. She could have, like, done a Google certification class and, like, gotten an actual fucking job. You know? Like, the, she always had the chance to work. Um, she spent it lavishly, though, on luxury clothes, electronics, and a personal trainer, as well as $800 hair highlighting and $400 eyelash extensions. Which, $400 for eyelash extensions sounds very expensive, but I feel like in New York, that's not that weird for like a luxury place. Cause in Miami, people pay that much. My girl is like, she's not like a super luxury place. It's like her in a place and it's kind of in the suburbs. Um, and I pay her like 120. I'm lashless right now though. See, um, Anna, after taking a hundred thousand dollars from one bank to give it to another bank, but then just keeping half of it to spend on eyelash extensions. This is my favorite meme. Clink, clink, bitch. <laughs> Cheers. We're eating good. Miss Frazzled said TikTok is actually missing out. Hi, Oopsie Daisy. You're on TikTok. Welcome. Um, but what I was saying is those of you on TikTok, if you want to see the memes, you have to come to Twitch. I always feel like a rat without my eyelash extensions. So this was my logic is I was like, I kind of, they've been itching me for some reason. I think because I went without them for a month, I just got used to like rubbing my eyes and stuff. And then because I'm moving one, I don't have any fucking money. Like I've just been bleeding money, like between the mover and the truck and the first months and the deposit. Like I'm literally just like all my money's bleeding. And then I don't have a new lash person where I'm moving. So I was like, I'll just get them taken off. And then like once I have more of my savings and like can live, um, then I'll find a new person. But anyway, back to Anna Delvey, cause she can afford eyelash extensions. I can't, but she can. That's the other thing. I get way too overstimulated for eyelash extensions. I just, I hate laying there. Like I love having them, but it's a really big time commitment. And like, I used to go on Saturday mornings, but like I want to sleep on Saturday mornings, you know, not every Saturday. I'll go once a month on Saturday morning. 
Um, but I am getting nails back. I have a nail appointment. Um, my a friend who lives where I'm moving recommended a nail place, so I have a nail appointment pretty soon because I care more about that. Once I've moved in, I'm going to get nails because, look, today I, like, cut my hand open. You can't really see it. Um, I cut my hand open on a nail on the floor. <laughs> so I'm excited to get nails because I didn't want to get nails while I was moving because they would just break, but once they're done, you know. Currently moving to L.A., Frozen Redacted are my favorite follows on every fucking platform. Not the injury. It didn't... It bled, but, like, barely. Like, it only bled a little bit, and then I put a Band-Aid on it, and then the Band-Aid fell off, and it stopped bleeding after that, so whatever. Pipeline complete. Okay, so enough getting distracted. Back to Anna Sorokin. So on February 18th, 2017, Sorokin checked into a $400 a night hotel at 11 Howard in Soho, Manhattan. She often gave, this is what I was talking about, she often gave $100 cash gratuity to the concierge who she befriended and other employees for simple tasks such as restaurant recommendations or bringing packages to her room. Still, most of the staff found her to be annoying and described her comments as impolite and classist. So it seems like she treats wait staff very well when she thinks they're going to be able to do something for her. Yes, I am moving far, but I'm not supposed to say where because it's a small place that people would drive there. But anyway, um, Sorkin became comfortable in the hotel and regularly walked around in leggings or a hotel robe, often dining at the hotel restaurant where she befriended chef Daniel Rose and billed the cost of her meals to her room. She treated the concierge to massages, manicures, and sessions with celebrity personal trainer Casey Duke. So she really has like befriended this concierge. They show that in Inventing Anna heavily. I'm not sure how much of that is true. Um, this is Casey Duke. She becomes important later. She's an American celebrity fitness instructor, life coach, and spokes model. She's pretty. She seems nice. But we'll talk about her more later. So after management discovered that there was no credit card on file for Sorkin, they insisted that she settle her $30,000 bill. I don't know how the fuck they didn't have a credit card on file for her. Like, literally, what is this? Like, what? <laughs> um, so they insisted she settle her $30,000 bill, and then she had a case of 1975 Dom Perignon champagne delivered to the staff in an attempt to keep them on her side. So she was like, I can't pay my bill. But I can give you some very nice champagne if you just want to drink that and forget about the bill. I think that would be better. Um, hotel policy prevented the staff from accepting the gift. One time, actually, okay, so one time this guy I knew got fired from the hotel that we worked at because a guest gave him alcohol and was like, take a shot with me. And was like, the guest opened the bottle got him to take a shot and then gave him the bottle and then the guy put the bottle in his bag and he got fired for drinking on the job. And I just think that's very fucked up. Like if a guest wants to give you alcohol, so be it. And I don't think you should be able to take shots on the job, but I don't feel like, don't get fired. Jay saw you on my phone and clapped. Me and Miss Frazzled's baby, like that's my twin flame, actually. Like my soul, like they ran out of souls and copy and pasted and gave us the same soul. Like, literally, they ran out of souls at the Soul Factory. Every time we're on camera together, we go, well, she started it. It was her original creation. But anyway, um, that's called making the moment, right? Okay, so by March 2017, one month after the $50,000 thing that she had, because of her lavish lifestyle, she had run out of money. Imagine burning through fifty five grand in one month. Uno, uno, one, one month. Um, she would offer to take friends out for drinks or dinner, but when it was time to pay the bill, she would claim she had forgotten her credit cards or that her credit cards weren't working. And by this time, she was very active in the New York social scene, attending many, many dinner parties. She met Macaulay Culkin and Martin Shre Shrekley. I know this name. Who is this? Oh, this guy. The pharma bro that was in prison. We should do that one. For anyone who doesn't know who Macaulay Culkin is, I'll show you a picture of him as well. He's the Home Alone kid. My credit cards also never work. Same. So crazy. He's a major asshole. Yes. True. Oh my god, what did I just do? Sorry, I just like fucked something up on my screen. I'll fix it though. There we go. Sorry, I got cut off weird. 
Roman Succession's brother. Yes, a lot of people don't know that that is Roman from Succession is his brother. But anyway, she's still partying with famous people. She's still doing her thing, whatever. And yes, he is married to Brenda Song. They have a kid together, or two, I think. So in April 2017, Sorkin deposited $160,000 worth of fraudulent checks into a Citibank account. And she was able to retrieve $70,000 from that. She then wired $30,000 to the 11 Howard. That's the hotel she was staying in where they were like, we don't have a credit card on file for you. So she did pay her bill at that hotel. So major slay for her, I guess. And then May 2017, by sending a forged wire transformation from Deutsche Bank for the $35,390,000 fee, Sorkin booked a return charter flight on a business jet to Omaha, Nebraska, to attend the annual meeting of Berkshire Hathaway with the goal of meeting Warren Buffett. Berkshire Hathaway is a real estate company. It's owned by Warren Buffett. I'll Google it for you. Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, multinational conglomerate holding company, whatever the fuck that is. But I'm sure you've heard of Berkshire Hathaway and seen their stuff around. Owned by Warren Buffett, they have their conference in Omaha. So she has this fake wire transfer so that she can take a private jet there. Like, come on, you had 40 grand. You couldn't just like book a fucking Delta flight. But anyway, Kathleen McCormick, the former CFO, Chief Financial Officer of Blade, testified that the startup allowed Delvey to book a charter flight to the tune of more than $35,000 without requiring to her to pay in advance because the CEO of the startup had socialized with her and vouched for her finances. So they knew that the wire wasn't working because they were like, hey, queen, we didn't get this money. And she was like, that's weird. I have to call my bank. I'll figure it out. And they let her get on the plane anyway because she was like kind of friends with the CEO. So I guess the employees were like too afraid to do something because she was friends with the CEO. And this appears to be her entire strategy. Um, Warren Buffett is a billionaire. Yes, he is a billionaire, real estate billionaire. Um, this appears to be her strategy. She's like, if I like create this image of myself that's so rich and successful, people won't question me and I'll be able to do whatever I want. Because when she was getting on the plane, they were like, girl, you haven't paid. And she was like, oh, I'll figure it out. And they were like, well, that's the CEO's friend. So I guess we just have to fucking deal with it. Um, do, 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 do. According to McCormick's testimony, Delvey had booked a flight from Morristown, New Jersey to Omaha, Nebraska. It had previously been reported that she was there for the Berkshire Hathaway meeting. <coughs> like we said, she then flew back on May 9th, a trip that cost a total of $35,000. Typically, those who were required to pay in advance, yet McCormick testified that occasionally Blade would allow customers who've flown previously to delay initial payment. We've let people slide in the past, frankly, and quite frankly, they've paid, she testified. Although Delby had not flown with Blade before, our CEO had briefly socialized with her and him knowing her through those circles, we felt she was good for payment, so we booked her for the flight. So that's really just like, that's her whole strategy. That's why I included some more details about this one, because it seemed very, very relevant. So she had apparently met the Blade CEO um, Robert Weisenthal, but he later said that he did not know her at all. So I'm a little bit confused about this. I think he might be denying it. There's a lot of people that are like, oh, I just briefly met her because I think they're embarrassed that they believed her is my theory. Blade reported her to the police in August 2017 after repeated failure to pay. Sora can later claim that during that trip, she had snuck into a private party where she mingled with Bill Gates. So apparently she met Bill Gates, but who fucking knows? However, at this point, she's still refusing to provide a credit card to the 11 Howard Hotel. So she paid off what she owed them, but they were like, you, you need a credit card on file. Like you can't just keep staying here with no credit card on file. So while she was in Omaha, they changed the entry code to her room and her belongings were placed in storage. This is what hotels do. If you are squatting in a hotel room, they wait for you to leave that room. They will she make it so your key does not work and they will take all your stuff and put it in a storage room. I know because I've been in a little storage room, not at the 11 Howard, but at the hotel I used to work at. I want her to date Elon Musk. Stop. That's such a good idea. Have they? I want her to date Pete Davidson. Y'all are hilarious. 
Um, as retribution, using a tactic she learned from Martin Shrelicky, she purchased domain names corresponding to the hotel managers and emailed them to ask for a ransom of $1 million each. I don't know, like, what... Like, I don't know what her end game was with this. Like, I see why she did it, because she was mad at them, I guess. But she basically, like, so this would be, like, if you purchased the domain name, Miss, like, MissSmith.com, and then you went to Miss Smith, and you were like, hey, I'm going to post a bunch of mean stuff about you on MissSmith.com unless you pay me. That's kind of, it's like holding someone's name hostage on the internet because you bought their domain. So... Another great point, you should always buy your domain. It's very good to own your domain, even if you have no intention of using it, it's good to use it, or it's good to have it so that no one else can use it. Um, and that is a really great baby gift as well. That's one of my favorite baby gifts, is to buy someone their child's domain and just tell them, like, now your child owns their name on the internet and they can either never use it, and this means no one else can use it, which is great for them, or they can use it for whatever they want because it's their name. I think it's a very, like, to me, that's a baby gift that's kind of similar to giving, like, an investment money. She's delusional, but God love her. Okay, Anna, Delvey, and Elizabeth Holmes would be kind of a cute couple, though. I can see it. I can definitely see it. So after three months of living at the 11 Howard, with the help of her friend Rachel, Sorkin moved her belongings to the Mercer Hotel. So I guess she scared them enough into giving her stuff, but I have no idea. Like, I tried to find more detail on this, and I really could not find that much. Um, so she's now at the Mercer Hotel. She also stayed two nights at the Bowery Hotel, sending the hotel a fake wire transfer receipt from Deutsche Bank. So she's trying to pay via wire, but most hotels don't accept wire payment unless you're, like, throwing an event there and you're going to pay, like, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Then they'll take a wire. But they always want a credit card or a debit card for just a room. That's really normal. So she's having a hard time finding housing. Then in May 2017, Sorkin invited Williams, her friend, Rachel Williams, and Casey Duke and her videographer on what she said was an all expenses paid journey to Morocco, apparently because she needed to reset her electronic system for travel authorization. So basically, if you are on a visa, you cannot remain in the United States for a certain amount of time. I don't know what kind of visa she was on, so I don't know what kind it was. I think she was on a tourist visa. I don't know. But anyway, she had to periodically leave the country to reset her visa clock. So if she wasn't leaving the country, she would be overstaying her visa. But, but if you leave, even if it's for one day, you leave and come back, it like starts over your timeline. Um, Orange is the new black, but Anna Delvey and Elizabeth Holmes. So they're going to Morocco. This was apparently inspired by Khloe Kardashian because Khloe Kardashian stayed at this hotel. So Sorokin booked a $7,000 a night Riyadh with three bedrooms, a private swimming pool, and a dedicated butler at La Moenia. I don't know. Let's Google it. Let's see what this hotel looks like. Oh, this is nice. This is nicer than where we live. That's for damn sure. Very fancy hotel in Morocco. Um, a five-star luxury hotel in Marrakesh, Morocco, with the plans to make a behind-the-scenes documentary of the creation of her foundation. One thing I really love about rich scammers is that they always film themselves. Like Fire Festival, Anna Delvey, Elizabeth Holmes. Like they always are on camera. No, I have not read Rachel's book, but I really want to. I shouldn't have time this week. Um, here is her Morocco trip, one of her pics. This is June 4th, 2017. Atlas Mountains, she said, on my way. She's kind of crushing the Instagram game, I'm not even going to lie. The hotel looks so nice. If I had been her friend, I would have gone. Exactly. All the people that are like, her friends are so stupid. They kind of are, but like, if I was getting invited on a nice vacation, I'd be like, I don't give a fuck what you do for her. <laughs> like, if I didn't think I was going to get fucked over and I thought she was being weird with banks, I'd be like, whatever. <laughs> I simply do not see. Um, so here, oh, I forgot about this. Oh, I'm excited. I love when I forget about slides. So here is some of her content that was filmed in Morocco. Okay. Oh my God. Who, who is this? Hold on. Let me who allow ads on their who, site. Who are you? Let me... Please allow ads on her site. I'll start it over. There we go. Now all these million dollar, million ads are going to pop up. 
Okay. What point is this? Yay, ads. I love how the internet is completely unreadable and that there's two videos playing at once now. How can mobility help develop livable spaces? I hate the internet so much. By bringing ideas Look at how many ads have come together. up. So let's connect. Find out more. IAA Mobility 2023. Okay. Who, who is this? Who is that? Who, who are you? Okay. Do I know you? So there's her in Marrakesh. Living life, I guess. And then... Here is, this is like a fan edit, but it has Marrakesh footage, so I wanted to show you. Like, you're going to tell me you wouldn't go on this trip? I would go on this trip, personally. So, 18 second video with 30 seconds of ads, literally. Uh, do, do, do. And then here is another clip of her on that trip. A socialite soaks up the sun at a fancy hotel in Morocco. This hill looks very good. She calls to book an exotic and lavish excursion. Can we get a helicopter from the Marrakesh airport to go to Casablanca airport? Girl, my it bags would be packed. The image that Anna Delby projected in her trendy circle of friends. Okay, so there's like more to that video, but it was kind of stupid. So I just clipped the actual content of her in Marrakesh. The helicopter, now I know she's stupid. Okay, so... After a few days at that hotel, staff said that they were unable to charge her credit cards and demanded an alternative form of payment, and she gave excuses, blaming people for typing in the numbers wrong or saying that their systems were down. That was another thing. She'd be like, your system must be down. Run it again. Do you know who I am? Um, so she was just like really not trying to take accountability. The lack of credit card on fire file led to a hotel staff member being fired, apparently. And then Sorkin convinced Williams to pay the $62,000 bill, which was more than a net year salary for Williams. And basically she said she was like, and the hotel kind of convinced her to do this too. They were like, we just need something on file. We just need something on file. We won't charge it. We just need a credit card on file. So while Anna was like, I'll talk to my banks, I'll work it out, Rachel kind of got put in the awkward position where she had to put something down because the hotel was like literally like in their room being like, you have to leave if you don't put a credit card down. And like you're in a foreign country, you don't speak the language. I get why she did this. She really should not have done it, but I see the position that she was in. Um, and like this was her friend and this friend keep in mind this is her rich friend that had never fucked her over so her friend is saying like i'll pay you back i'll wire you the money like i'll she's like i'll fix my credit card before we leave like when williams put her credit card down she in no way thought that this card was going to get charged that sixty two thousand dollars so i do feel bad for her like in this moment um and so Again, Anna Delvey is like, I'll pay you via wire transfer so you can just pay the card if we have to, you know, like they're basically just like, she's getting gaslit into thinking her card won't get charged, so she puts it down. Um, Williams had apparently also played for the flights to Morocco and items purchased by Sorkin and a private tour of the Majore Gardens using her credit card because Sorkin kept saying she would be reimbursed. And another thing that um, Anna Delvey was doing is she was basically saying like, um, my cards aren't working because I'm in a foreign country. And sometimes like your card will not work because you're in a foreign country. And so Williams was like, oh, she's using like a European bank and she's in Morocco. Her card just probably isn't working. I'm sure she'll pay me back. Because again, Williams at this point has no reason to believe that Anna doesn't have money. So she thinks that she's going to get paid back. So despite repeated promises from Sorkin and one excuse after another, Williams only ended up getting $5,000 from Anna and she got it via PayPal like weeks and weeks later. Um, do, 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 do. What was I? So Williams was only pay repaid $5,000 and ended up having to borrow money from friends to pay her rent because she only had $400 in her checking account. 
Years later, Amex ended up removing $52,000 of the credit card charges. Apparently that was after Inventing Anna came out because the Amex was like, damn, that's fucking crazy. We'll do you a solid with this one. I think Amex did it for the publicity, but um, Anna was never found guilty of what she did to Rachel Williams because Rachel signed and put her card down just because her friend deceived her. So after contacting acquaintances who had also lent money to Sorkin and were not repaid, and all who all of them had heard different backstories on Sorkin's parents' alleged wealth, real, Williams realized that Sorkin was committing fraud. In Morocco, Sorkin also... Okay, so just to give you context on more on the Morocco trip, I wish I had put in a whole timeline about the Morocco trip because I learned a lot about it like within the last two hours. Um, but basically, Rachel Williams left Morocco along with Casey... Hold on, let me go back. Casey, the trainer, left super early because she got sick. Then Rachel and the videographer left together because Rachel had to go on a work trip. So they leave Anna in the hotel. Rachel thinks that her card has just been put down as a temporary hold and Anna's card is going to be the one that gets charged. Rachel goes on her work trip. Rachel gets a text from Amex, says, hey, your card's been charged $62,000, queen. And then Rachel calls Anna and is like, bitch, what the fuck? You told me you were going to put your card down. And that's when Anna is like, I'll wire you the money. I couldn't figure it out. I was so busy. Sorry, I'll wire you the money. So that's where we're at now. In Morocco, Sorokin had also stayed at the Kabash Tamadot, a virgin limited edition luxury hotel, and at the Four Seasons Hotel in Casablanca, where she asked Duke, who had already returned to New York due to a foodborne illness, like we said, to pay for the room. So basically... Anna Delvey is in Morocco with no money and calls her friend Casey and is like, or Casey Davis, I think it's Casey Duke, calls her friend Casey Duke and is like, my cards aren't working. Please help me. Please help me. And Casey Duke is a celebrity trainer. So she has money. So she's like, girl, what the fuck? Okay, you're my friend. I'll help you out. So Duke paid for a hotel for a little bit and the flight back to New York for her. And Sorokin asked for first class travel girl and Sorokin drank fine wines and the most expensive champagnes and took a helicopter to the airport in Casablanca so she knows that she has no money she's still living it up I think Amex removing it was before the show because she writes about it in her book and the book publishing is a subject of the tv show oh I think you're right because she did say though that so in the show they show that she gets the money from Amex within the trial and that wasn't true it was way after the trial so I'm not sure when she got the money, but it was way after the trial. It wasn't nearly as fast as the show makes it out to be. Anna, every time someone puts a credit card down, treat yourself. Girl, please, it's an emergency. I need a helipad for the hotel in first class. Does not sound like an emergency. Um, yes, to those of you on TikTok, to see the PowerPoint, you have to go to Twitch. Peace, love, and blessings. Thank you. But yeah, so she has other people's cards. Like, she's now progressed from stealing from randos to stealing from her friends. Um, returning to New York later in May, Sorokin relocated to the Beekman Hotel. 20 days later, she had a bill of $11,000 and was failing to pay despite repeated promises, so she was evicted. She then attempted a similar scam at the W Hotel um, in downtown in New York um, and failed to pay her $500 bill. She was evicted after two days and charged with theft of services. So by July 5th, Sorkin was homeless. She then interrupted the trainer in the middle of a date, crier, crying and pressuring her trainer to provide lodging. So she's like, can I stay with you? Can I stay with you? Please, please, please. Um, and she cried through a tantrum when Williams refused. Sorokin also tried to dine and dash at the restaurant Le Parker Meridian Hotel. When she got caught, she claimed to police that she could get a friend to pay the bill in five minutes. At this time, Sorokin was being investigated by the Manhattan DA for bank fraud. So things are like very rapidly starting to come apart for her. And then on August 17th and 21st, 2017, she allegedly deposited two bad checks worth $15,000 into her account at Signature Bank. And over the next few days, she withdrew approximately $8,000 in cash before the checks were returned. Please, I need a first class ticket to go to Chili's with my internet history class. So 
she gets arrested October 2017. So in mind, this is August when she does these checks, then she gets arrested in October. So how did she get arrested? It was a sting operation planned by the New York DA's office. In order to facilitate this, they worked closely with Rachel Williams. At the time, Sorkin was staying at Passages Malibu, a luxury rehab treatment in California. She has never really said what she was being treated for, why she was there, nothing of the sort. One suspicion that a lot of people have is that she went to a California rehab because California has stricter laws about like have like people's information in that kind of context. Like legally, they're not allowed to say if you're staying there and things like that. Um, so in order to convince Sorokin to enter a more public venue where an arrest would be more easily affected, McGaffey had Williams arrange a lunch meeting at a restaurant outside the facility. So basically. Rachel calls her and is like, hey, I'm in LA. I'd love to hang out because at this point, Anna Sorkin was still posting Instagrams that she was in LA. So she's like kind of trying to hide, but in a much bigger sense, she's really not hiding at all. Um, so she posted that she was in LA. So Williams calls her and is like, hey, queen, I'm in LA for work. Let's get lunch, even though she's not there. So then as soon as Sorkin walks out of the facility to go meet her friends for lunch, she gets arrested by LAPD and then transferred over to the um, New York Police Department. So later that month, she was indicted by a grand jury convened by the Mat Manhattan District Attorney on two counts of attempted grand larceny in the first degree and three counts of grand larceny in the second degree and one count of grand larceny in the third degree and one count of misdemeanor theft of services for the fraudulent loan applications made to city national banks and fortress, the check fraud, the cost of the trip to Morocco, and the unpaid hotel bills and restaurants. So, the DA is after her ass. She's been indicted. Hate to see it. So December 18th, 2018, she appears in New York City criminal court and rejected the plea deal that offered three to nine years in prison. So she was like, I'm not pleading guilty. Um, I've never heard about any of this before. Oh my God. Oh, and someone talking about the Netflix thing. The Netflix thing is really good, but it's not 100% accurate. It's not a documentary. It's a drama. drama. Okay. So anyway, she rejects the plea deal because she's like, I didn't fucking do anything. So at her request, Sorkin's defense attorneys then arrange for a stylist to source outfits for her court appearances. And yes, she is at Rikers Island. She is staying at Rikers Island. If you do not know about Rikers Island, Rikers Island is one of the scariest places on U.S. soil that I probably would never want to go. A lot of inmates have been killed at Rikers Island. It is a very, very violent place facility. It is very intense. So they put her at this very intense facility, which I'm not saying is wrong. I think it just contributes to the drama here. So she swapped out of her Rikers Island uniform for a Michael Kors shift dress. The following day, she paired a sheer black St. Laurent top with a Victoria Beckham trousers. And then on Friday, she refused to enter the courtroom because she did not want to appear in her prison clothing and her civilian outfit for the day had not been pressed. You are lying. You are lying. Like, that is fucking crazy that like, you're going to refuse to go to court because of your outfit. Um, after a crying tantrum and delaying trial for an hour and a half, she was forced to appear by the judge. The judge was like, bitch, if you don't get your fucking ass out here, her priorities, her priorities. So here's some pics of her. Look how tired of her this fucking guard looks. Literally look how tired of her. Someone pressed on her soft spot as a baby. She just wants to keep slaying. So I think at this point she realized like, I am in actual trouble. The media is watching this. I need to fucking eat. Cause she's not stupid. So here's some pics of her in her court outfits. All the guards literally just look so fucking tired of her. She's kind of eating in a lot of these. I'm not even gonna lie to you. She said, if I'm going down, I'm gonna look hot while doing it. So here's again, a variety of court photos, guards looking tired of her again. This is the one of her in the Rikers uniform. She looks quite disheveled. I would be stressed too if I had to be in court looking ugly. This is how I look when my boss asked me to answer an email. Oh, I'm the wrong way. It's giving. I wish those outfits weren't actually good. <laughs> 
I followed an IG account at the time that was just Anna Delvey court looks. Yeah. So it started to go viral on social media, like very, very, very much going viral on social media at this point. Um, at trial, Sorkin's lawyer defended her by saying that her intent all along was to repay the debt and that the services were given to her in exchange for publicity on Instagram. He described her as an entrepreneur with a comparison to Frank Sinatra, claiming that they both created a golden opportunity in New York. So her lawyer literally went up there and was like, Frank Sinatra used to hire people, hire women to cry and faint at his concerts to bring media attention. How is this any different? And we all love Frank Sinatra, which like, that's not a legal defense, but I love it. Like, absolutely love it. Absolutely incredible. Love, love the legal defense. And yes, I am on Twitch for those of you that are on TikTok. So then April 25th, 2019, after deliberating for two days, they found her guilty of eight charges, including grand larceny in the second degree, attempted grand larceny and theft of services. But she was not found guilty on one attempt of grand larceny in the first degree, um, in relating to the original loan application with City National, and one of larceny in the second degree relating to the alleged theft of $62,000 from Rachel Williams in Marrakesh. So she was not found guilty on everything, but she was found guilty on a lot of things. The beloved singer who also maybe did illegal things, the courts love him. If I ever go to court, I'm going to be like, literally Frank Sinatra did this. It's not even that fucking serious. Um, where was I? In an interview before her sentencing, Sorokin said that I'd be lying to you and everyone else and to myself if I said I was sorry for anything. At least she picked one time to tell the truth. You know what I mean? You know? Um, then on May 9th, 2019, she was sentenced to four to 12 years in state prison and fined $24,000 in order to pay a restitution of $199,000, including $100,000 to City National, $70,000 to City Bank, and approximately two thirds of the amount owed to Blade. These amounts, as well as the $75,000 of legal fees related to the trial, were all paid from the $320,000 deal she got with Netflix. That is fucking crazy. As much as she is a manipulative narcissist and not a good person, I respect the shit out of her from a business standpoint. She, so Netflix wanted to buy her story and was like, we wanna make a show about you. And she said, okay. And then paid off her entire restitution with it. Yes, they did pay her because they paid her one to consult on the show and two to use her name and to use her story and all of that. Only 12 years proves white collar crime does pay. Oh, wait till you hear how long she served. Um, and then she was allowed to keep the remaining $22,000. Okay. Um, she was not forced to pay the $160,000 in legal fees relating to the unsuccessful lease of the missions, the $65,000 in legal fees to Gibson on the unsuccessful loan application, and the $30,000 in legal fees, do legal fees due to Lowenstein Sandler. I guess she was not required to pay those because the court, I don't know if this is true, but I guess it's because those companies did not do their due diligence on her paperwork that like she didn't have to pay it back because it was like their fault, I guess. I don't really know. Or maybe they didn't press charges because they were embarrassed, but she never ended up having to pay that back. I really am unclear about how that happened, but those are my assumptions. Um, and then she was incarcerated at Rikers Island during the trial, like we said, where she had 13 infractions for misbehavior, such as fighting and disobeying orders, and she was placed into solitary confinement during Christmas. At fucking Rikers Island. I would not do well there. I really don't think I would. Um, after the trial, she went to the New York State Department of Corrections and was initially housed at the Bedford Hills Correctional Facility before being transferred to the Albion Correctional Facility. And we're going to listen to it later. We're going to watch a video that's like Anna Delvey iconic moments. But she is on the phone. I don't know who she was talking to, but it's recorded where she literally sh says like, yeah, Bedford is so boring. Rikers was way more happening. Rikers? Like, I don't think, if I'm trying to think like, okay, I have to go to prison. What adjectives do I want to describe that prison? Happening is not an adjective I would use. 
Really not. Party tonight at Rikers? Question mark. Um, God. So on February 11th, 2021, she was released from prison on parole. So she ended up serving, let me Google the exact amount. How long did Anna Delby stay in prison? She was sentenced to four to 12 years. Yeah, we know that. after serving nearly four years. So she got out in three and a half years. That's what I thought. I didn't want to say if I was 100% sure. So yeah, she got out in three and a half years. It's pretty common for people to get out a little bit early. Um, that's not that weird that she got out a little bit early. It's kind of weird that she had behavior infractions and got out early though. A lot of times people will get out for good behavior. But anyway, February 11th, she was released from prison and checks into the Nomad Hotel and hired a German camera crew to follow her and film her activities. And then six weeks after her release on parole, March 25th, 2021, she was taken into custody by ICE for overstaying her visa and she was held in a New Jersey County jail by ICE. So interesting thing about this is that they could not hold her in a New York jail because New York is a sanctuary city. So New York jails are not willing to hold ICE detainees. And normally ICE doesn't give enough of a fuck to do anything about it. But in her case, they gave enough of a fuck. So they moved her to New Jersey. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, where was I? She was held in New Jersey by ICE awaiting deportation to Germany, which she is legally contesting. An immigration judge ruled that if Sorokin were freed, she would have the ability and inclination to commit fraudulent and dishonest acts. So then January 2022, she tested positive for COVID-19 in prison and was placed in quarantine. While still in prison on March, 20, March 1st, 2022, she joined a class action lawsuit by the ACLU, period. I guess she's like now joining the ACLU and suing the government. Sorkin alleges that ICE refused multiple requests for a COVID-19 booster shot. She only received one dose from Johnson & Johnson the previous April. And then October 5th, 2022, Sorkin was granted a $10,000 bail bond and released from prison. As of October 2022, Sorkin is required to remain in a 24-hour home confinement with electronic monitoring and has no access to social media. Her house arrest is being served at an apartment in the East Village of Manhattan. So she's not allowed to leave her house, but she is allowed to make money. Um, ACLU is such a random guest star in this lesson. Um, so I wanted to show you a couple of different things that I found. We're just going to like watch some videos and stuff of her. So here is a house tour. This is apparently from the Vogue podcast. I don't really know, but... This is uh, hilarious. Welcome into my I just transformed this space into kind of like my personal gallery. All the pieces out from the walker room, they are part of the same collection, those black pieces that I have over here and here. And this piece is kind of like, looks like a window a little bit because in this room I only have the skylight. This is a sculpture. I thought it would be the perfect place because the microwave, you can switch the light. She don't cook. I love it. It's like a little gallery. <laughs> those are some of the pieces that I made. It's kind of like experimenting with things. Just trying She's to an artist now. What I'm going to do next because I've been doing pencil sketches while I was in jail because I couldn't get like any acrylics or anything or any um, paper bigger than 9 by 12. So that's her house tour, I guess, which is wild. Um, here is an interview with E.T. This is from November 19th or November 18th, 2022. I couldn't get any stretched canvas and rakers for my oil pastels. Like she literally just like she's not living in the same reality as us. Like she just talks. So where did this money come from? Very good point. One. This bitch be working. In prison, she was on podcast. I listened to three different podcasts today that were recorded while she was in prison. She was on Paris Hilton's podcast while she was in prison. She was on Call Her Daddy while she was in prison. I bet those people paid her. I bet she got paid for that. She's also selling her art. She has also she also appeared at Art Basel and she came virtually because she's on house arrest. So she did a presentation at Art Basel via Zoom, I guess. So now she is working and I guess making, I don't know if you can call it an honest living, but people are paying her 
for her media appearances and people are paying her for her art. Um, didn't she talk to like a Harvard business class or something? Probably. The Rikers to call her daddy pipeline. And this is what I mean when that podcast I was listening to said like, we cannot celebrate narcissists like this. Her having the ability to be a rich person now is probably so inspiring to so many narcissists. And she has her own podcast now. So let's watch her interview with E.T. My visa is currently pending, so um, the only reason I'm on house arrest is because of my immigration status. So if I were... Um, and that's the other thing. Like, people are like, oh, she's on house arrest. She's on house arrest because of immigration. She served her time for the financial crimes she committed. I think she's on probation, but she is not on house arrest because of that. That is a United States citizen. Like, I would not be on house arrest, nor would I be banned from social media. So, and I voluntarily chose to... Um, kind of stay here and to figure everything out so hopefully people will um give me some credit for that look so many of us think we know you we have seen your story play out money is not an issue for me what you wearing you look poor so who is the real annie velvety Gosh, I guess that's a loaded question. I guess I'm still figuring it out. So you are I can't lie, to, she's glowing. Uh, this prison. At Rikers. I think she found a loophole. I don't think podcasts count as social media. So what does house arrest entail? It's 24-7 confinement. I mean, I can It's called the Anna Delvey Show. It only has 4.2 stars. Oh, that's right, yeah. Okay. <laughs> can we see the ankle monitor? Yes. Oh, she only has five episodes, Anna, the tabloids and they're all from June. Is waiting to hear if she'll be oh, one came out today. Look, Stop, is she Maybe. here? Yes, like Stop. I, so I, sorry to interrupt, but I just like really spooked that, so she has five podcast episodes. The first two came out June 6th, the third came out June 13th, the fourth came out June 20th, and then the fifth came out today. She just started her podcast. She interviewed Whitney Cummings. She's here with us. Is Anna in the room with us now? <laughs> Anna! It's not much written down. I just like, I don't know. Like, I'm looking for the best time to actually, like. Okay, um, I'm going back a little bit. Sorry. Ankle monitor. For oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can we see the ankle monitor? Yes. Anna, who the tabloids dubbed the fake German heiress, is waiting to hear if she'll be deported. Are you writing a book, a tell-all? Maybe, yes. Like, I've had so much written down. I just like, I don't know. Like, I'm looking for the best time to actually, like, um, publish it because, you know, like, my own uh, gaze is still on direct appeal. I sat down again. I would be terrified if she was here. She would eat up this stream about herself. She would actually walk in my room and tell me why I was wrong about everything. Exclusively with a 31-year-old in her one-bedroom East Village apartment. Her rent, $4,200 a month. Anna's sketches, which are basically paying the bills, hang on the walls. So, so she sells her sketches. Uh, I made it earlier this year while I was in Orange County Jail. What do you project? Orange County, New Jersey. This year from or New York. Artwork? Not I California. I got off 300000 maybe. I don't know. Okay, so some people may say, is this Anna Delvey scheming again? What do you say to those people? She's 31 right um, now. I mean, I don't know. I just like, I'm just selling my art. I don't know. How would you describe your art? And to, well, she said she had made around three hundred thousand dollars selling her art. I'm poking fun at myself in the events I've been through um, for my sketches. There's always a sense of fashion tied in. Has anyone surprising purchased a piece of your art? Oh my gosh, so many people did. I mean, um, Koi Feynman, she purchased the SNL, the Saturday Night Live. Run up on my car. This is a metro car. <laughs> You know, like all kinds of people. A lot of lawyers purchase my brands. <laughs> Why do you think that, you know, lawyers are, are loving your artwork? Delusions of grandeur, girl, read the room. Well, that's what she just said. Is she said her art is poking fun at herself. I don't know if you saw, but another one said the sex tape is the finale. She's funny. She's a narcissist. Narcissists are very charming. I would like to. When I they want to be. From now. Oh, I would love it. Is it a daily practice for you to create some sort of piece of art or work on it during the day? No, we're uh, not buying this I art. No one give her money. So I try like to sketch, like, um, write down some ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't like necessarily draw every day because it just entails like a lot of setup and, uh, yeah, but I do sketch a lot. Okay. 
So I, I imagine you find yourself with a lot of time here yeah. at your apartment since you are under house arrest. Um, the chat getting sucked just in. Just some of the basic things. How do you go about getting your groceries? Do you cook? Do you order your food? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your day-to-day -day life. Uh, well, so far I've been actually pretty busy having lots of meetings, but um, I'm not allowed to leave, so I have to order everything in. Okay. So I'm like using um, Uber Eats. She's keeping Uber Eats in business. Or like people bring me stuff. Okay. Are you a cook? I am not. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure I'll get to it, but uh, I have like a sculpture on my stove right now. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't we look saw like you've been doing a lot of cooking around here, Anna, but maybe you could. Who knows? It could become a new hobby. Um, <laughs> they, they did. They did teach me how to cook ba or how to bake cookies in prison. So maybe I'll. <laughs> you got, you got to learn how to bake cookies uh -huh. in prison. And who says that the U.S. prison system doesn't re-educate people? What else did you? What new skill sets did you learn in prison? Um, I mean that's pretty much it. I mean because I'm vegetarian. <laughs> do you work out? Do you do any kind of like? Yes, I have like a skipping rope. <laughs> really? I hope your neighbor's okay with that. Uh, there are no neighbors downstairs yet. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. That's good news. Well, this interviewer is not going to interview part of your daily life. Or actually, Anne is a hard person yeah. to interview. How are you managing that? Are you coping okay with not being able to post on the gram? <laughs> uh, I guess what people forget is like I've been on social media since like pretty much 2017, with the exception of like six weeks last year. Yeah, you, so. you went to town. On the six weeks last year that you had available to you, you went to town. Is that normal that they strip social media for people who are under house arrest? No, it's not. So then why do they do that to you? I think it's, I mean, my lawyer, I mean, I don't know, I'm not... Uh, you went to town. Not yet, but uh, it's pretty unprecedented. I mean, my, what I believe is that they were trying to um, give me as many opportunities to fail so they could, like, re-arrest me and say, like, I can't follow the rules. So just kind of, like, a bit of a setup, you know? So did you remove the a picture of you all from smile. your phone, from your devices, so you're not tempted? Yeah, I don't even have the passwords to my social media accounts. So. Probably the smartest thing there. Um, walk us through a typical day. What time do you get up? What do you like to order for breakfast? Walk us through from start to finish. Uh, well, actually, I wake up pretty early. Um, I don't know why. Just like, I don't know. <laughs> um, like today, I woke up like at 5 in the morning. Um, this and, is the uh, lamest I interview. Just, like, catch up with people I just wanted Europe. you to see her aura. Uh, I have like, lots of friends in like, um, London, especially. How has this experience changed you, or has it? You've been to an ICE detention center. You have served time at Rikers. You are now 31 years old and living under house arrest. Has this experience changed you? Absolutely, yes. Um, but I just learned so much and I met so many people that I wouldn't be exposed to normally. And um, yeah, it's been like a huge learning experience, like all over. Um, I learned so much about the system. I got kind of like the human experience. And, so uh, this is one thing I do love about her and that I am going to take as advice in my own life is whenever anyone asks her, like, do you regret your choices? Do you regret what happened? She always says like, I have learned so much. It got me to where I am today. No, the house arrest is not indefinite. Indefinite. It's because of her overstaying her visa. And immigration law is like really different and really slow and has a lot of like lack of transparency around it. So I'm not really sure what her status is, but she's awaiting to see if she's going to get deported. Um, a lot about myself and it was a huge exercise like in perseverance too. So are you in touch with your family? Yes. Are. are they a big support system to you right um, now? Um, they're supportive. I wouldn't say they're my primary support system, but they are. I mean, just because they're not in the country, so they don't really know uh, much about the system. So, uh, like, yeah. <laughs> but they help as much as they can, and they've been in touch with me throughout the whole time. Her and Trisha in a podcast system. moderated by Do Ethan Klein. Uh, some, yes. Like who? Who do you turn to? Um, I don't want to put anybody in blast, so. Yeah. What about, uh, dating? Are you dating these days? No, I was too busy. Too busy Not for dating. dating. Yes. Period. Is that some, would you like to find love? Would you like to start dating uh, Well, I'm being pitched a lot of dating shows, so. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, but I'm trying to, like, just figure out my own life, so. What's next for you? I'm hearing that there's also the possibility of a reality television show. How much truth is there to that? And if there is truth, what's the status of it? 
No, there's no truth to that. <laughs> you would not do a reality show? Absolutely not, no. You bet you would do a dating show? No. So this is where you come for some fresh air. Right? Yeah, it's pretty. I mean, it's better than jail. Dream blunt rotation, Anna really Delvey and Trisha Paytas. That's my nightmare. Like, Stay. I would just sit there. I'd be like, please don't call me ugly. Please don't call me ugly. I would also start to trip out because I feel like all of us look too similar and I'd be like, like I would think I like tripled somehow. So you say you're happy, but what is bringing you that happiness and joy? It's just having, um, I guess, having my phone, being able to communicate uh, with people not through like GTL, pay phone, um, being able to like order fresh food and salads, um, having access to like- Me and her really have the same hobbies. Having a phone and ordering salads. That's it. I just want to have my phone and order salads. So here is another video. This one is hilarious. This is her best moments of video. Well, if someone is impressed by a hundred dollar bill, I don't know what to tell them. I mean, that's their problem. They said all kinds of things about me. This is when she was on 60 Minutes um, Australia. It's on YouTube. It's 25 minutes. I was going to show it, but it was a little long, but it's really good. Do not come as a surprise because my whole background is in art and fashion. Is that really so surprising? I care about clothes. I don't care what you think of me. I don't need your approval. I don't need to impress you. It's like, I had no idea what was going on. So just like, I kind of like did things. Why waste my time? I just knowing the people who went Be on phone, like, order salad, eat hot chip and too lie. Too smart or like too talented. So I felt like, why? It's like, no one in New York cares. You cannot impress anyone with 50 million, 60 million. I don't know, maybe with a billion for a bid, but then like, no one cares. Who cares? This is what people fail to understand. How many businesses are just a house of cards? You just don't know about it. They can say whatever she wants in her little book that no one reads. She's a photo editor at a fucking fashion magazine. I don't see this case as a crime at all. How about that? Can you name me the names of the people? And I'll tell you if I feel bad about that. Because he said, do you feel bad about any of the people you stole from? And she said, can you name me the people and I'll tell you if I feel bad. I'm so scared what, of her. That's so criminal that I've done. Hi, my name is Anna Delphi. We are in New York and um, I'm out of jail. And well, I guess there are a lot of people who are not in the right mind in New York. So he asked her, would you say that anyone who does business with you in the future is out of their right mind? And she said, well, there's a lot of people who are not in their right mind in New York. I like, I need to study her to like learn how to be so good at answering rude questions. Cause like, yeah, she deserved that question, but it is rude to be like, would anyone in their right mind do business with you? And she said, well, there's many people not in their right mind in New York. She just really doesn't give a fuck. Of course, as always. I'm not a fraudster, so I wouldn't know. Aside from prosecution, even though- So that's one thing. Someone said, imagine if she channeled this energy into social justice. I was hoping that she would go that route with her life because she did talk about how like being in jail showed her how messed up the criminal justice system is. And she was saying, she was like, I met women who just went to jail for like one or two days for a mistake that they made. And then they lost their job. They lost their children. And like, she seemed like she cared to learn that. Not them. No one has actually like- done anything bad to me why would I be upset at anyone I felt like I just did all like I had all this amazing experiences and I'm going to write a book about it the scene is pretty dull it's just like not the same as very good see because it's just happening <laughs> let's try that's what I was talking about I'm so glad we watched this the scene is pretty dull it's not like Rikers Rikers was happening huh <laughs> <laughs> huh <laughs> Right again, what, you want to restart? <laughs> what do you mean? Yes, I can. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> what do you want me to explain? <laughs> I just don't feel guilty and that's it. <laughs> There's not much to explain. because it's just happening. I just didn't feel guilty. There's not that much to explain. Um, and then this is the most recent thing I could find. This is from June 16th, 2023. Anna Del left prison, as I said, 2021, but now she's under house arrest because of an expired visa, overstaying the visa, rather, and she's launched a podcast from her apartment called The Anna Delvey Show that will be discussions 
about rules, who makes them, and who breaks them. She joins us now from her place of house arrest here in New York City. Uh, thank you very much for taking the opportunity. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm all right. So, you know, I was reading through and talking to the producers, and I really do believe there is something that you're tired of talking about. Oh, my God. About. I forgot who Chris Cuomo was. A, a big thorn Sorry. on your side. You know, you were offered a deal by prosecutors, and the judge, and very unlikely, you know, very unlikely this happens. She says, no, no, no. The judge says, no, no deal. There's no remorse. That's here. not happened. Well, but that's how it's been reported. Uh, wait, where do you have that information from? From the court record. And the interesting... Are you aware that the Netflix... <laughs> no, 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 that I, never I've happened. never seen, I I've never seen the Netflix deal. show. I had the option. I've never seen the Netflix show, Anna. I'm just, I'm just right. trying to make so a different point. So reported that the judge declined the deal. The judge uh, declined the deal. They say there's been no remorse. But the point is this. You're pretty steadfast in telling people... Well, who said asked. that? That did not happen. Where do you have... No, what's the source? All right, I'll, 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 show you, I'll show you where I got it from, but let's deal with the concept, okay? Um, you say often to people, enough. Oh, that just people. never happened. Okay. <laughs> Has it ever happened that people have asked you about remorse and the role in this and what it is to apologize? Oh, my God, she would love on? HRH collection. I serve my time. I want to move on. But don't you understand why people want someone in your position to express that they know that what they did was wrong as a way of a kind of allowing your transition forward. I guess they are both sides to it. Yes, I understand why people would want to hear me apologize, but it's also I'm not being guilty. I want to see her debate Ron DeSantis. Or, um, Do you mind if I tweet that? People just assume that Thankless wretch. is a documentary, which is not. It's fiction. And, um, yeah, a lot of the stuff never happened. When you say, so the other side is that you didn't do all of it, but you know you did do some of it. You were convicted uh, by a jury. Um, you didn't win anything on appeal. So isn't that something that you feel might help your prospects and your podcast? My are still forward? pending. Well, your appeal of your immigration status is uh, And as well as my criminal appeal. You really should do better research. But has, has uh, anything I got to put it up two counts. Go ahead. My criminal appeal is still pending. It hasn't even been filed yet. I'm not responsible for how fast the system is moving. I'm well, so sorry. It's, so there is no appeal. So it's not pending, which would mean you filed What it. do you mean there is no appeal? It's pending. Pending means that it's yes. filed and being processed. Um, after you receive a briefing schedule, which has not happened. Right, but you did file it. Um, how familiar are you with the criminal justice system in New York? Too familiar. But you did file the appeal, yes? Too familiar? It doesn't sound like that. Um, let's say I did. Yeah, my criminal appeal is pending. It's publicly available, available information. So you don't believe Too that familiar. remorse plays any real role for you in terms of allowing you to move forward? Um, it does. She should have been an attorney. And, um, she really should have. have. She has no fear of talking in circles. When I was younger, and um, I think I should be afforded a chance to move on in my life. Um, how you know when you're young and you accidentally commit fraud? We all make mistakes when we're young. Many more times shall I apologize. I repaid my restitution in full um, before I even was released from prison. This is funny. How many people can say that? Um, it, look, it's, yeah. good that, it's good that you did it. You were mandated to it. They came after you about your role in inventing Anna as a consultant. Uh, that they didn't want you to be able to, that the law should have prohibited you from making any money, but the money did go uh, to restitution, did it not? Um, part of it. And do you think uh, that was fair, or do you think all of it should have gone to the people you took money from? Well, my restitution was what it was, and I repeated it full. So should what do you something on top as well? <laughs> no, you're not supposed to give anybody profit. You just have <laughs> the way he said, "Oh, they're mad that you received this money. Should all of it have gone to the people?" And she said, "I paid it in full. Should I have had to pay more?" <laughs> like she really should have been a lawyer because she isn't. The she has the most powerful skill of all that I have been trying to develop in myself, and it is being so fucking okay with awkward silence. It is the ability to say something that is so fucking rude 
or so obviously incorrect and just be okay with stopping and waiting for the other person to respond and just being okay with that silence i swear to god will take you so far in your life clearly as evident by this manipulative narcissist oh my god am i a manipulative narcissist we don't have time to get into that right now pray back uh what you did and then any well, any fines any uh, fines years ago so what do you want now that what do you want to do well. what do you do with your life if you assume that you're given the ability to stay in the country um, just move on from the whole thing. I mean, there are so many inaccuracies um, that's been portrayed in the media just because people don't bother to do their research and um, just move on from the whole thing. Yeah. It took a while for my therapist to convince me that I am not a narcissist. Okay, well, anyone, and Mandy just texted me this exact same thing that I was literally about to say. She read my mind. Nobody asks themselves if they're a narcissist if you're actually a narcissist. Like, narcissists don't stress out about being narcissists, so we're good. Thank you for watching. Please go to newsnationnow.com. Newsnationnow.com. So, that's the most recent interview I could find with her. Uh, but there's also on June 20th, she was spotted taking out the trash in a full glam look. So, there's the trash, and then there's her ankle bracelet. Oh God, she is hilarious. So before we get into the game, I wanted to ask what you guys want to stream about on July 5th. Because I'm in the middle of moving into the new place, I'm going to do a remix of an older topic. So I'm just going to take an old slide deck and I'm going to kind of add some more stuff to it, add some more content, make some changes, add some more memes. Um, we will do both of these eventually. So don't feel like you're not going to get one if you don't vote for it. I made a list of my favorite streams that were older um, and decided I'm going to redo a couple of these. So as I'm going into this like new house and things are going to be kind of crazy for a little bit, we might be doing some redos. So I'm going to put up the Nearpod information so that you can vote in this poll if you would like to, and then we will play our trivia game. So if you would like to vote in the poll, I'm ignoring the chat. Love you so much. But if you would like to vote in the poll, go to join.nearpod.com and put in VHI6U. That's join.nearpod.com, V-H-I-6-U. And I'll put this in the chat as well. So I'll give you guys a couple minutes. Oh, and someone had a very good idea to talk about Martha Stewart. I will add that to my list. It won't be this week just because moving. Um but it will be eventually. Let me add it to my list right now. I'll give you guys a couple seconds to vote and I'll put this back and then we'll play the game. Stream ideas. Martha Stewart. I love Martha Stewart. How do you spell Stewart? Stewart. There we go. Okay. So if you'd like to vote in the poll, again, join.nearpod.com, and the code is VHI6U. Also, for those of you on TikTok, I'm going to go ahead and end the TikTok. If you want to keep hanging out, come to Twitch, but we're going to just be playing the game and some other stuff. So I will see you guys on TikTok, not Wednesday tomorrow, but Wednesday, July 5th. Bye. And for those of you on TikTok or on those of you on Twitch, I am staying. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Frank Sinatra is also interesting. Too old. Yeah, we're, whatever the poll, whatever wins on here, like I'm literally going to give y'all, I'm going to set a timer for another minute and whatever has more votes within the next minute, that's what we're doing. All right. You have one minute. Sorry, I forgot my camera was. You have one more minute to vote in the poll. Thank you. I love this iPad case. It's from Amazon. It looks like a composition book. I'm going to tell you my favorite reason is that I can leave it in my purse in the car and I don't worry about someone breaking my window because who would break a window for a composition book? So that's why it's my iPad case. I love it. There's another case that I like better because it has a bigger pocket, but this one's still the winner for anti-theft. All right. You have 30 more seconds to vote. So far, oh, it's a neck and neck. Wow. Cute and very practical. We love her. It's a very neck and neck. 
It looks like Stonewall is winning. Oh, barely. Oh my god, it's so close. This is like a real, real election. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? All right. Alrighty, we have how sex workers built the West is our winner. So that's what we will be talking about next week. Um, let me write that down so I don't forget. And here, uh, while you're doing that, let me put up the game and let you pick your little characters. Okay, which game do we want to do? Carnival, because we're all clowns, jungle, underwater. Which game do we want to do? First one I see we'll do. Wednesday, it'll be 7 p.m. like normal. 7 p.m. on Wednesday, January 5th. Carnival was the first one I saw. You get it. All right. You can pick your little people. I'm assuming this will be faster than normal because a lot of you are already in there because of the poll. So I'll give you a couple seconds to do your um pick your characters if you had not joined yet you can still join the game our code go to join.nearpod.com and enter vhi6u i'll give people a couple more seconds to join the game and then this is a 10 question trivia game about what we learned about today and then i have to pack up my desk in my office and then i'll be done packing isn't that exciting very exciting stuff I'm going to be taking down the tapestry. I may or may not have this tapestry in my new office because I'll probably put it up right away. But while you guys are joining the game, let me tell you what I'm doing in my new office in the new place. So do you know, for those of you that follow me on TikTok and the OG stream people, do you remember my pink doors in my closet with the pink photo collages? I'm doing that to an entire wall. So I don't know if that'll be the wall that's behind me or not. So I don't know what the office setup will be. Um, but at first it'll probably be pretty similar, but I'm like gonna do cool stuff in my office. So eventually it'll change. Thank you. So y'all might see it like progress over time. That kind of may be kind of fun if I do it behind me and then I just do like a slow progression, but I have to figure out where my desk is gonna go and all that stuff. Also, I'm really excited to show you guys. So I have an on air sign, like how they have in like radio stations, like on air. Um, and my dad just fixed it for me. And it actually was my grandfather's because he used to host a little radio show out of his garage. So he got it as a gift. Someone gave him an on air sign and he uh, passed away when I was in high school, um, which I wasn't sad about in high school, but now makes me want to cry. I digress. But anyway, I'm really excited because I'm going to have an on air sign and it'll be hanging and it's like a legit one. Like it's a big and it's metal and my dad is coming to um, help us move. So he's gonna hang it up, it's gonna be great. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit start on the game. I'm gonna give you five, four, three, two, one. Who did we learn about today? I keep getting these ads where you can donate your eggs and then they'll freeze your eggs for free for you. So like you donate some and you keep some and I literally get ads for it every day. Todd Chrisley, yes, he is in prison, I believe. My head is itchy. Those ads are tempting. I will never do that because I'm afraid of needles and you have to inject yourself with stuff, so I'm out. What other fraudster was Anna connected to in her early days?
I missed the first half of class. I'm flying blind. It was a Billy McFarland. What did Anna use to create fake bank statements? A fertility class with Laura High would be amazing. Um, I'm sure it would be amazing, but I don't really want to do that. I just, that's not that interesting to me. <laughs> I just don't know that much about fertility, and I don't think I want to know. You know? I'm not pregnant. That's all I need to know. That's as much knowledge as I need. Plus, I know it's a sensitive topic for people, and I try and do things that are not sensitive topics for people because I like to joke about stuff, so I don't want to pick something that people are going to get their feelings hurt if I joke about it for the most part. Obviously, someone's always going to get their feelings hurt, but you get what I'm saying. Because I can't make jokes about fertility. I can't, just can't do that. I have not seen the Netflix doc, Our Father. Doing a class about how gynecologists that use their own sperm would be wild, though. Very true. Very, very true. That's wild. Um, so where did Anna take a luxury trip and try it inspired by Khloe Kardashian? I'm a single mom and my parents watch my daughter so I can attend my history class and always ask, ask how I do on the quizzes. Stop. I need a certificate as merch to show them off. Will you email me? Please email me. Let me put my email in the chat right now. I'm going to make you something and I'm going to send it to you. Please email me. I'm so fucking serious. It might take me a while because I'm in the middle of moving, but I want to make you a certificate and I'll mail it to you. Email me. That's so fucking funny. Um, who did Anna turn to for flights and housing upon her return from Morocco? Casey Duke, the celebrity trainer. I need to eat my sandwich later. Where was Anna arrested? I'm losing confidence in my ears, moving too quick for my own good. Aren't we all? was an anti-vaxxer and refused the COVID vaccine in prison. True or false? I'm learning so much by being wrong. That's, that's the fucking attitude we love to see. I love a growth mindset. Thank you for that. the class even if I miss the class so I can get some spark notes on it. The video and game are so out of sync. Yeah, Twitch has a delay on it because of, um, is it, what's it called? Like the internet. I don't know. <laughs> Why are we doing a remix stream on Wednesday, July 5th at 7 p.m.? And our remix stream is about the sex workers that helped build the American West. how to read 
for you, didn't we all? Because you forgot how to read. I wish I could forget how to read. Actually, that was a joke. I don't want to accidentally manifest that. I'm joking. I just don't like when people email me and I have to read emails at work. Um, in first place, we have Isabel, then Mad Mads. I blame Ronald Reagan. Cowboy Froggy, Anna Delvey's Ankle Monitor, The Baby from Ice Age, Baja Blasted, Vicky, Sammy B, Alexis Mads, Dana, Katie, Vika, Emily, A Get-Go Parking Lot, Bring Back Snack Wraps, Kendall, Anna's Ankle Bracelet, Travona, and I will scroll through the rest. Nice job, nice job, Lonely Open Girl, I see you. The Wire is coming, the wire is coming. Gas Station Roller, nice to see you as always. A Bestie's credit card. Love to love a Bestie's credit card. Redacted salad order. It's a buffalo chicken salad. It's my favorite. Or any kind of like chicken taco salad is my favorite. Um, nice job. Nice job. So, Anna Delvey sources. These are the sources that I used. I put together today's stream deck a lot quicker than normal, so it wasn't as comprehensive as I like to do, but I mainly used Wikipedia for today. I took the lazy girl route and used Wikipedia. I also used some timelines and lots of YouTube videos, which we watched, as well as Inventing Anna, which was great. Um, so any jokes, any questions, any memes, any anything, let me know. Feel free to put it on the board. Any, any Anna Delvey lore that you know that I don't. But thank you so, so much for being here. This is my favorite part of my week, every single week. Everyone said that I was crazy for um, doing this on the week that I was moving, but... I like I'm a routine person and this is my favorite part of my week so I'm really glad that I did it because you guys gave me energy and I'm feeling good about things and it forced me to clean and pack and be motivated because I had a deadline because I wanted to hang out with you guys and I told myself that if I wasn't done packing I was gonna have to cancel the stream so that was my like bribe was to hang out with you guys so thanks for being here to hang out with that made me ever do my thing or that made me do my thing. Would Fraz ever co-teach a stream for us? I bet she would, but I have to figure that out from a technology perspective. Um, and that's a great time to plug my Venmo donation. So if you would like our tech to be better, feel free to donate for my iMac. I don't know if Fraz would come. I'm not gonna commit that to you. But that sounds like something she would be into. But the problem is right now, my um, computer could not handle video chatting and live streaming. So it couldn't do both of those at the same time. Um, my computer just can't handle that and I don't think hers could either. So that is definitely a possibility, but we don't know. And yes, last stream in this apartment. Wait, stop, I'm gonna cry. I hate that you said that. I'm such a sentimental person for like moving. And like, that's so true. Oh my God, like I started my streams in this apartment and this is our last stream in this apartment that's really cute um so next time that you see me i'll be in my new house which i'm really excited about mike will be there mike is here i always like my left and rights are backwards mike is here mike is coming to the new house mike will be in the car with me um but it's a new era i was here so she never lived with that old lady and her boyfriend from the Hulu series. She had lived with a couple of people, but a lot of the stuff in the Netflix doc, I don't know if Hulu has, or the Netflix drama is drama, dramatized. Y'all, I can't believe Anna Dolby has been teaching us U.S. history on Twitch for a year and we didn't need <laughs> Stop. Is the where... The wired money is from the where the meme is from, huh? <laughs> Class watching Anna scam does it original because panic, us admiring her art and quirky personality, calm, redacted reminding us that she's a filthy scammer, panic. Oh my god. If Anna Delvey has the confidence for to, to charge 25k for her art pieces, it's time to raise your prices. Me to everything Anna was getting away with, knowing I could not fool someone for one second. <laughs> I'm really late, but I just wanted to say the last three dropped my Venmo, and someone dropped $50 and a few other donations, and I appreciate this community beyond belief. Can't wait to watch the VOD of this episode. Childish Gambino's left sock. I'm so glad. I remember when that happened um, last stream. I'm glad that someone donated to you. That's amazing. 
We need Fraz to teach a class on the art of shotgunning starbies. Stop. Ah. Anna Delvey, when the bank fronted her $100,000, treat yourself. Always treat yourself. But I am going to pack up my office, which is the last thing I have to do. And then I'm going to go get my sandwich. I'm going to go to bed. And then tomorrow is going to be quite the fucking day. I have to wake up and then pick up the truck that my boyfriend's going to drive. Thank God for men. I would never want to fucking drive that you all. I would never even do that. Um, and then the movers are coming to his place. We're going to pack up his place. Then the movers come to my place. We're going to pack up my place. And then we're staying in a hotel that night because I just could not fucking deal with unpacking that day as well. Um, but everybody have a great rest of your week. I will see you here in a week plus a day. We will be going back to Wednesday streams and our next topic is going to be how sex workers helped build the American West. Thank you so much for being here. This is my favorite part of my week and I hope you have a